what you're looking at right here is known as halite. It's a type of basalt. This one was discovered at a depth of 429 meters in Kansas back in 2014. And it seems to be approximately 267 million years old. But it's really what's inside it that's incredible. This micrograph taken by Kathleen Benison of West Virginia University suggests that there seems to be some kind of a diverse microbial cell life living on the inside. And it seems to have lived there for 267 million years. But this is not what we're talking about today. Because something else more extreme was discovered very recently. Something that you can see in this picture. Once again, a relatively similar formation. Once again, halite. But this time, 830 million years old. Way older than the dinosaurs, way older than first animal life on the planet, and basically representing the era when the more complex life started to appear on the planet and then colonize the rest. And all of this was discovered just a week ago from when I'm making this video, with the paper as always in the description below. Hello oh, wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to discuss what exactly the science is found here, what it means to studies like, for example, astrobiology, or studies trying to find life on other moons and other planets in the solar system, or even other planets in the galaxy, but more importantly, a study that seems to suggest life is very resilient. Now, assuming, of course, it's all correct. And this picture that I showed you in the beginning came from a study from just a few months ago. It was a study that made a very simple suggestion that basically water seems to be an extremely good preservative of different types of bacterial life. In other words, by having just a little bit of water, and here we're talking about liquid water, inside some kind of a mineral, bacterial life, in theory, can survive for millions of years. And that is just absolutely mind-blowing. And that's of course on top of other discoveries, such as for example this one from 2010, where scientists from University of Tokyo found various microbes living in extremely unlikely places, such as an ancient rock several kilometers below the seafloor. Places where we can kind of expect to find fossils and maybe deposits, but not places where we expect to find actual living life, functioning life, bacterial life. And so the implication from all of these studies, although they haven't really been proven yet, is that it does seem to contain living organisms. And well, organisms potentially hundreds of millions of years old. But what exactly is this? And what exactly is halite? Well, it's more commonly known as rock salt. And it's that stuff that's often used in food preservation and obviously allowed various human cultures to preserve food for longer periods of time and eventually created all sorts of different salty cuisine on the planet. And this unusual mineral, which often forms very complex crystals, which is also basically just sodium chloride, was formed millions of years ago from ancient seawater. So basically seawater that contained many different organisms living in it. And so obviously by studying these crystals, at least in theory, we could study ancient life. And in the last few years, scientists have officially found several different microorganisms living either inside or next to various halite formations. But it's really the organisms that are trapped inside of it that seem to be of most interest. Mostly because, at least from the outside, they seem to show signs of life. And so unlike previous discoveries of microorganisms from before, where the ancient microfossils usually represent some kind of a rocky formation, with all of the microfossils here being more or less squeezed into the rock itself, these unusual salty crystals seem to contain small amounts of fluid trapped inside, with several older studies specifically focusing on fluids that have been found in halides before. And these water inclusions literally represent that ancient water from which the halides were formed. In other words, it's very unlikely that any of this water came from the outside or somehow seeped into the halide. All of this was there from, from the beginning, from millions of years ago. At least that's according to some of the modern formation theories in regards to this unusual crystal. And so previous studies have already suggested that by studying this water, we could maybe learn about the water temperature, the chemistry, the atmospheric conditions, and a lot of other properties of ancient Earth. But also because we're talking about salt here, nobody really thought that it's going to contain actual living organisms. But in the past, scientists have discovered different types of extremophiles that do tend to like salty conditions. But even here, the scientists were still a little bit skeptical about what they were actually seeing. But this new halite deposit came from Australia, from a region that used to have an ancient salty sea. The sea that slowly became a desert by basically drying out and creating all of these very unusual halite crystals. 
And so by using various microscopic techniques, such as ultraviolet petrography, first the scientists identified various liquid inclusions present inside the crystals. But they also identified certain types of ultraviolet fluorescence coming from the particles on the inside, which generally seem to coincide with organic solids and organic liquids. And more specifically, corresponding to prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells often found on planet Earth. And some of the colors that were being produced by this UV light were also kind of showing signs of organic decay. Yet other signs were basically suggesting that some of these organisms were still actually active and producing stuff on the inside. In other words, these microscopic observations suggested that there was actual bacterial activity happening inside the crystals of halite. Which means that not only are these bacteria alive, they also seem to have created some kind of a microhabitat where they can survive for millions of years. And if you ask how, that's where the answer ends. We don't really know. As a matter of fact, it's almost impossible to even start thinking about it. But some suggestions are basically in regards to just once again this being in water. And second of all, that maybe a lot of these bacteria are getting everything they need from the crystals around them from the salt itself. And though generally it's assumed that things like, for example, radiation or exposure to various chemicals could maybe destroy various types of life over a period of several million years, it's also been established that a lot of these deposits inside halite are not actually exposed to anything relatively dangerous for a very long time until we essentially discovered this and removed the deposit, now exposing these bacteria to surface radiation that it previously have never seen before. But in reality, all of this right now is just guesswork. The variety of these microcrystals, which you can see right here, are basically one of the bigger mysteries when it comes to the survival of life on the planet and, of course, the evolution of life as well. But I guess one of the more important discoveries from this paper is of course in regards to the techniques they used, optical techniques, in order to find this and to even find the signs of biological activity on the inside. And assuming that the study is actually correct and this is indeed this ancient life, this has a huge implication for life around the solar system and of course around the galaxy. For example, it means that a lot of different objects that have salty oceans in the solar system, such as Europa, Ganymede or even Titan, may also have very similar life living there and maybe that life also came from planet Earth or vice versa. Here we are once again talking about this idea of panspermia. We also know that Mars seems to have these really huge amounts of salty water deposits that might have existed for billions of years as well. Implying of course that if similar processes happen on Mars, life could still be thriving here even now. Although I guess thriving is maybe not the right word. It could be trapped in these salty crystals. But more importantly, this also implies the absolutely extreme resilience of life on the planet, with life potentially needing just a little bit of support in order to sustain itself for a very, 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 very long time. Now, once again, this is still preliminary and nobody has opened up these crystals yet to try to see if there is really life there, which by the way would be very difficult without contaminating the sample and producing potentially false data. But that's kind of what's implied from all of this. With this image even showing us that there seems to be some kind of an algae cell here, potentially some kind of a prokaryotic older cell, and maybe even different species of various unicellular organisms that seem to have found ways to survive in these conditions. Once again, very preliminary and still not confirmed, but that's the implication from the UV observations of these unusual halide crystals. So this is a pretty big discovery and a pretty big study, for many different reasons, but really for astrobiology as a whole. But that's of course assuming that this is still alive. This could be maybe dead bacteria and maybe dead cells just reacting to various chemicals inside the bubbles. But at the moment there's really no way to determine this simply because of the size of these samples and the dangers of contamination because of the extraction techniques. Although chances are, maybe in the next few years, someone will find a way to finally determine what's going on here and finally explain how all of this is possible. At the moment this is a very mysterious discovery but a super exciting one. Which means that you should maybe subscribe because we'll come back and talk about this in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you for watching, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.